This is a short introduction to centripetal force and how you apply it. So in the first picture, I have a little mass of m traveling in a circular path with a constant rate of speed v. Its velocity vector is always tangent to the, to the curve. And the radius of curvature is r. So what we've discovered is that the acceleration, in order for something to move on a circular path, um, with a constant speed, the acceleration must always be pointing exactly to the center of curvature. So there's my acceleration vector. And then this idea of centripetal force, it really, it just comes from applying Newton's second law to the motion that I'm seeing here. So I'm going to write down F net equals MA. And in order to have an acceleration pointing directly to the center of curvature, I know for sure the net force has to point directly to the center of curvature. So that center pointing force, so I have a center pointing net force is sometimes called the centripetal force. So my warning about this is that centripetal force is not some new force um, that we've conjured up. It's actually caused by real pushes and pulls of real physical objects. It's just that when the net force adds up to be center pointing, we call it centripetal force. So most textbooks will write it as an F with a subscript of C. And my mass was M. And I know that my acceleration, in order to keep um, an object on a circular path of radius r moving at a speed of v. My acceleration must be v squared over r. That's really a geometric fact about the required acceleration to bend a path into a circle. All right, so there's that. I don't normally recommend memorizing this as a separate formula. Um, you should know that the acceleration is v squared over r, but all we're doing is applying Newton's second law. So let's look at an example down here. The question is, if I tie a string to this rock and whirl it around at 6 meters per second on a radius of 0.8 meters and the rock has a mass of 1 kilogram, I want to find the tension in the string. Okay, so I can go ahead and put that tension into the force diagram. Strings can only pull, and the string is pulling right to the center of curvature, and it's the only force acting on this mass. So I get into my Newton's second law analysis. F net equals MA. And something that's happening implicitly here that I want to point out I'm just trying to find another color to use. Here we go. Is that the acceleration points directly toward the center of curvature. Otherwise, this thing wouldn't be staying on a circular path with constant speed. And I'm going to choose that as the positive direction for my analysis because it simplifies my calculations. I don't have to deal with a bunch of minus signs or anything. So I'm just applying Newton's second law, F net equals MA. And then I look at all the real things that are pushing or pulling on this mass that I'm analyzing, and there's exactly one force in this case pointing in the positive direction. So that was simple. And then my mass, I'll just leave as an M for now, and then my acceleration must be V squared over R in order to bend the path of this thing into a circular tra trajectory. So I've already solved for T, I just have to plug in M and V and R and smash the numbers in a calculator. So get that done real quick. And I end up with 45 newtons for the tension that points to the center of curvature. So in this case, that tension, because there was only one force involved, that tension is the centripetal force. That 45 newtons is the centripetal force.